Hey, Michele, how are you doing? Fine, fine. I'm really well. I'm currently in Austria. <laughs> I've been sick the last two days. I didn't tell you this before. I, I was like feverish in the last two days, but it's all good now. I'm getting back to life. <laughs> yeah, step by step. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you get fever just after coming back from the Latin America tour? Yeah, it's crazy. Basically, I've been on the road for over two months, like a month in uh, in the United States and then three weeks uh, or two weeks and a half in in America. Then we went to Mallorca with Visions of Atlantis for the full metal holiday and it was perfect. And now I'm three days in Europe, back in Europe like in the office doing uh, what I have to do. And <laughs> in, in these three days, I, in these last three days, the stress, I, I just... You know, the stress from touring around uh, is coming out now. <laughs> but it's better. I think it's the opposite. I think it's the opposite. I think it's the it stress is. of not touring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> I just want to mention that uh, if I move my finger, you will see some color or some yellow brownish color everything normal is just a uh, disinfection so if someone uh, okay it's it's, really it's not a zombie apocalypse yeah <laughs> exactly okay, it's, it's not a zombie them. apocalypse Re ready, ready for uh, halloween <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> perfect <laughs> but yeah let's go and talk about vision of atlantis so you joined the band in 2018 how did it happen um, so back then there was a tour that was planned with Temperance and uh, Visions of Atlantis together. Actually, it was Temperance as a, a first act, then Dragony as second act with Siegfried, the old singer, the previous singer of Visions of Atlantis. Then there was uh, Visions and then there was Serenity. Uh, it was the Symphonic Middle Nights number four uh, because it's a cycling tour that happens every year. Like it just happened with Sirenia and Amirian Dawn again. So it's like a, a tour that cycles and that uh, happens almost every year, if not twice a year sometimes. Yeah. Um, and back then, um, like Sigi, Siegfried, uh, he was on the verge of leaving the band because of uh, working reasons, because he works at AKM, which is the Austrian GEMA, the Outer Rights Society. And he has a regular office job in which is needed for him to be uh, in place. It's not like he can uh, smart work uh, or else, like luckily I am doing. And the schedule of Vision of Atlantis was getting uh, like more and more uh, demanding in terms of amount of dates. Actually, if you think of it, last year we played something like 80 shows. Uh, this year we are around 70. So it's it's a lot, uh, especially if you consider that there is not only the show dates, but especially in summer with festivals, playing a show means being away for three days. So if you multiply 10 shows for three, it's like 30 days off plus the tour. You don't play every day, so... All in all, 80 shows means that for 100 or 120 days, you're uh, out uh, from, from, you're away from your place. Uh, and Sigi couldn't afford this amount of free dates, uh, of free uh, holidays, the holidays uh, from his work. And like he was at peace, uh, keeping on going with Dragony. So uh, because of this tour, he got to know me and he was like, well, you know, this guy could be the perfect match and the perfect substitute for me. And yeah, he asked me directly. I sent some demos to uh, to the band. They immediately liked it. They were a bit skeptical, to be honest, because it was Italian. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, you know, <laughs> like I, I don't I don't like to hide this kind of things. I'm really straightforward. And yeah, there was some skepticism because of my uh, nationality and the experiences they had with uh, with other Italians before. But in the end, here I am. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Um, you just came back from the Latin American tour. How was that? How was the, what? What was the what? What is the the best memory from this tour? Oh, that's a good question because you know uh, Latin America is pretty different. Like, of course, this is obvious. It's really different from uh, from here, from Europe, and from the life we are used to, but it's also extremely different from the United States. And I, I think that the best, the, the happiest thing I've done is visiting La Paz in Bolivia. 
uh, it's such a different city, such a different universe, such a different world. It's like uh, really high. The altitude was crazy. We, uh, as a safety object, we also had a um, oxygen, uh, oxygen uh, okay. you know, like can, we didn't use it, but we it was there in case of in need. Case of because you, yeah, you, tr you truly feel like the altitude affects everything, you know, like the air is so... Uh, different, uh, like breathing is complicated. Like you really, you really feel it, uh, yeah. especially during the show. You know, especially during the show. So yeah, but of course that's not the the main point. The main point is like the environment and the scenarios that you see around you. You know, it's it's crazy. Like for instance, um, I don't know the English word for this, but you know this this uh, thing that takes uh, ski racers. Uh, from the bottom of the mountain to the top of the mountain uh yeah. you know this this box this moving box what's, what's the name in english um yeah in italian it's funivia for you to for, yeah. for you to understand what's, you know? what's the name so, whatever uh yeah it's, it's like this these big eggs you know that <laughs> where you where you put yourself into and that moves you around well in la paz they use it as if it was you know a tramway or a u-bahn uh, a metro yeah. Like they, they actually have it all all over the city to move from one place to the other of the city itself, and it's it's something I've never seen before. You know, like it's it's completely nice. different. And in general, I had the feeling that I was like, it reminded me of Tatooine from Star Wars. Okay. <laughs> the, the overall environment was like Tatooine, but really high up on a mountain. You know. Yeah. So, like, this is how I. I, as European, would describe La Paz. Maybe if someone from Bolivia listens to this interview, he would be like, what the fuck is he saying? But mm -hmm. this is the perception that I yeah. have. And it was so surreal, so uh, different, that I think this was the, the best memory. Uh, then, of course, there is coffee. I love coffee and I drank yeah, the best coffee. I, the, I was the going to ask <laughs> about the coffee because you post a lot of uh, picture with the coffee. So you drink coffee everywhere. <laughs> So yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Where, where where did you drink the best coffee? I think it was Ecuador. I think it was Ecuador. It's not my first time in South America, but the last time we didn't play Ecuador, and the best coffee was Argentina. Like the last time I came back uh, with a memory of the best coffee from Argentina. This time, after having played uh, after having played uh, Ecuador and having tried the uh, Ecuadorian coffee, it was absolutely the best one. It was like, how do you even describe it? Honestly, no offense to anyone, but in Italy, I never tasted anything like that. Uh, it's so so rich in terms of taste, so rich in terms of you know like um, flavor and and. At the same time, not too uh, sour, not too sweet. Like, it was just perfect. A perfect balance. <laughs> me, to me. Yeah. To me. And where did you drink in the world the worst coffee? In Germany. But it's not in South America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in, in Germany. Like, again, no offense, it's, it's one of my favorite countries, one of my of the main markets of heavy metal. So I have a extremely high respect toward Germany. Like, I really, really admire almost everything, but now the coffee. The coffee is just <laughs> like, like, I think they misunderstood the difference between tea and coffee, and they prepare this tea that tastes like coffee. You know, this is how I perceive it. Yeah, but let's get back to music. Um, so you are going to release uh, Apirate Symphony on 1st of December. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You had to think, but I check my... I, I, I was like, I was like, is it the 1st of December? Yes, it is the 1st of December. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you get the idea to do this album? Uh, actually, this is uh, for once for real. I can say, listen to the fans, because you know sometimes we <laughs> sometimes we just say, yeah, you know, you've been requesting this so much, and we released it, and most of the time it's because we were thinking about it already. The idea was there, and and you know, like when you start seeing that your idea matches with the 
uh, requests from the fans, you just make it happen. In this time, it's a hundred like for this for this release, a hundred percent the decision was made because of fans' requests. Like um, everything started when we recorded a, like a simple trailer for the tour we had last year with Sandria. It was a, a short, super short, uh, let's call it super short movie, but it's like a minute and a half, it's not even a movie. Like it's a super short episode of Clemmy and I finding this bubble uh, with inside a, um, a map that was showing the place that we would have toured uh, on a river, you know, and we published this tour and the soundtrack for this, uh, for this super short movie was a minute and a half of the orchestral version of In My World from the latest record Pirates. And this is when we started to uh, receive requests of people asking, hey, why don't you release this? Why, how can I get to, to this music? And at first we were like sending the MP3s of the orchestral version to those people who were requesting this. But then it, get, it got more, you know, and it, it got a bit too, too many actually to handle. And we decided to release it uh, as a CD in, um, uh, in the yearbook of Pirates Over Vakken because we released this live album uh, afterwards in um, uh, last summer, during last summer, um, the live album of Pirates recorded at Wacken. Um, and when it was released, uh, there was the yearbook version with three CDs, um, live Pirates over Wacken, uh, the orchestral album at Pirate Symphony, and uh, a DVD with uh, the show at Masters of Rock. And releasing this record, like, we got more requests to get, hey, how can I get the Pirate Symphony in vinyl? How can I get the Pirate Symphony in other formats? So at a certain point, we said, you know what? They are they are asking for it. Let's just release it. Let's give it. And we did. And we did. And we did. And we uh, actually, at the very first, we decided to just release it digitally and in LP version. The LP, like... Last week, if I'm right, we started the pre-order, and it went sold out in one week. So we are so we arranged we arranged some uh, edits with uh, with Napalm Records, and we made it to have like some additional copies. So now it's back on stock. But let's see how long it will last. It's it's yeah. I'm, I'm stunned because you know it's it's an orchestral record. It's not even our full record. So I'm extremely happy that it's going in this yeah, direction. Yeah. But yeah. But we truly decided because of the request of the fans this time. Yeah. And talking about the uh, albums, tomorrow is the day of uh, Temperance's new album. So yeah. what, what can you tell about this album? This is uh, a really, really, really uh, experimental record for Temperance. Like the band took a lot of risks. Uh, with, with this album because of course there has been some turmoil everyone knows about it uh, like Temperance never really I mean it, it looks like I, I live in bands that have a, a, a turmoil uh, history because Visions of Atlantis had so many lineup changes and finally with me joining the band we found stability so uh, it's not like it's my, like it's not my merit for sure but uh, we found balance now and this is amazing um, with Temperance, pretty much the same is happening because after Tiara and uh, and Julio left the band before Alessia and I joined last year, we had this issue with Alessia and with uh, and with Alfonso. I mean, it's, you can't even call it an issue because you know when someone takes a decision, you can only respect the decision. But of course, the band's the band needs to 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 go on. And we found this alternative uh, solution with someone that is completely out of our, that was completely out of our circuit because now Christine is part of us. Uh, but she's from, you know, she she's born in America, in New York, and she lives in Sweden. So it's a first risk that we are taking with yeah. someone that is completely out of our environment and out of our circle of people that we, that we knew before. But we were so stunned. Uh, especially Marco fell in love with her voice um, through YouTube videos. Um, so the first risk was getting someone with such a different voice uh, compared to what Temperance was before. Um, because, you know, Marco Sacchetto, the new drummer uh, who substituted Alfonso, for how much you can be different as a drummer, your role is pretty clear. 
And of course, yes, the sound is in your hand, but it's still the drums. Yeah. <laughs> you see, you see, you see what I mean. Like changing. It's it's different in terms of personality because in the end, especially when you write certain songs, the drum patterns are meant to serve the music itself. So the drummer can be creative, but it can go from you know uh, heavy metal sound to jet sound. Yeah. The drums in heavy metal needs to have a certain tone, a certain color. And this is what Marco does perfectly. And he follows up Alfonso style in a nice way. I mean, he's, he has his own personality, of course. They are two different drummers. But when he plays the all songs, the song doesn't change because of Alfonso's drumming compared to Marco's drumming. When it comes to the voice, the female voice of the band, especially when, when we are in something like a female fronted band. Temperance cannot be defined completely as a female fronted band, but of course the female vocals have a, a strong role. Um, changing from a crystal clear, shiny and uh, thin and high pitched voice as Alessia. After she already took over Chiara, which has also, you know, a crystal clear voice, uh, of course, more uh, opera oriented. But even when she was singing modern parts, she has this uh, clean and and really, really um, gentle voice, I would say. Now we are passing to someone who is like basically raspy, uh, aggressive, really rich in terms of harmony and deep. Because Christine yeah. is a contralto, so she's really deep in terms of in terms of color. It's a drastic change compared to what uh, what happened before. But at the same time, Marco made a good move, in my opinion, because basically this is a small musical. This is a little musical. It's not only a record. Like if you listen to it from the beginning to the end, there is a story. It it is a concept album with a story with. Uh, roles every musician has a role i am victor i am the character victor you know uh, so each and every single one of us has a specific role in the record and this is why we we also have several guests because there is fabienne from illumin shade there is uh, laura from crown there is uh, alle from twilight force and, and um, uh, trick or treat of course so we we made this move of changing drastically singer, but at the same time, the overall sound of temperance changed with a risk, with a risky move, and offered to the fans a musical where there is a reason why a, such a different voice is jumping in right now. So let's hope that it will work out in the proper way. Yeah. For now, for now, the reviews are are awesome. Mm -hmm. I also saw several skeptical comments here and there because, of course, I'm, I'm aware, I'm looking around, I, I don't ignore what's going on. And I see that a lot of people are like saying, hey, like, uh, this is so different. I'm not sure I like it. But I think it needs time. Yeah. I think it's something that needs some time to get used to it. And yeah, time will tell if we made the right yeah. move or not. I hope we did. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm waiting for tomorrow to listen the the album. Also, for the people that are watching this video, uh, of course, this interview has been done before the album release. So now it's... Exactly, exactly. It's, it's One day before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, and uh, talking about ERA, because mm. you joined the era project in 2019 uh when i saw that you do, um i just ch ch chow my tongue <laughs> but yeah okay. those those things happen sometimes <laughs> not sometimes <laughs> now now that i have this issue okay uh but yeah sorry for your feelings <laughs> yeah everything's fine <laughs> but um yeah um because when i saw that you joined uh, er the era project i was <gasps> Wow, because uh, when I was a teenager, I I was like uh, fixate on Era. I was uh, buying the albums Era, Era Two, so I was really listening all the time. And uh, so for me, it's still something that uh, something big. So I'm really happy that you are in this project. But how happened that you get in it? 
So probably when you got to uh, know that I was into ERA, you knew ERA better than I did back then. This I can honestly <laughs> tell you. Because <laughs> when, I, when I got called by ERA, um, I honestly didn't know the project extremely well. Like everyone was telling me, hey, this is massive. This is such a big thing. And, but I, I was not into it. Uh, and I, I mean, of course, I knew the song Ameno because this song basically everyone has yeah. heard at least at least once. But I couldn't really define and understand the size of of what I was getting into. Um, and then, of course, being part of it and like getting and digging into it, I I raised aware my awareness, my own awareness about it, and I understood how big of a how big of a responsibility and how big of an opportunity it, it, it would have been. Um, ERA, of course, doesn't work as visions or as uh, temperance. It's not a band of mine. Uh, it's a project in which I am, I wouldn't say hired, because, of course, yes, of course I'm hired as a singer, but it, 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 get, it got into more. You know, at the beginning, yes, I could have, I could have told, yes, I got hired by ERA and I'm, I'm just part of this, uh, this uh, project. Uh, right now, uh, there is a connection that has grown through through the years through touring. Because uh, I mean, in February it will be the third tour that I will have with them, and it's it's big tours. You know, we play arenas. It's like four thousand, five thousand people per night in the best shows. Two thousand and two to three thousand in the smallest ones. So it's it's basically something that like only huge bands can can have in metal. Like to me, like playing this kind of environments in this kind of context, it's it's like probably one of the biggest things that I've done so far, if you exclude summer festivals. Because of yeah. course, when you play Vakken, when you play, you know, this kind of like metal days and this and this kind of festivals, uh, you have way more people in front of you uh, attending the shows. But when it comes to club shows or venue shows or indoor shows, this is absolutely uh, at the top of my of my experience, and it's just wonderful. Um, again, I have to say thanks to Temperance because uh, in 2018 uh, we released "Of Jupiter and Moons," and um, the video for "The Last Hope in a World of Hopes" uh, came out. And this is still one of the videos uh, of mine with the most views. I think it's around 5.5 million or uh, up to up to 6 million right now. I didn't check the number lately. Um, but it's still one of the most seen of, of, my, of my personal video releases. And back then, somehow it reached the mastermind of ERA, which is Eric Levy, uh, the, the, French, the, the French composer that writes all the music. And he's also the guitar player of the live band, of course. And um, he wrote an email to the management of Temperance asking about me and Alessia. Actually, to be fair and square, he asked about Alessia first. And he said, I also really like the male singer, but I want to be sure that if I call them both, they are fine in coming together. Because you know that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes even if you're singing in the same band, the atmosphere might not be the best. Uh, which you, you know, like there is this legend. I, I never know. I never knew if it was true or not that Van Halen, for instance, they always book separate rooms in the hotel because even if they play okay. happily together, they don't get along together. And I've heard the same thing about Aerosmith. I, I mean, maybe it's urban legends. You see what I mean? But I understand the reason why he asked, "Hey, are you okay in getting the male singer to uh, together with Alessia?" And Alessia. Like she was the first one to say uh, yes, of course. I'm I'm super happy of going there with uh, of having Michael on board, and yeah, there we are. <laughs> yeah, and at least at least over there, Alessia is still there, which I'm really happy of. Yeah, yeah, that's really cool. It's dif different from everything else that you did, I think, in the past. Absolutely different. Absolutely different. Like everything is different from the way you you stay on stage from the way you act and you perform on stage to you know everything even even just the entire production that there is behind era is is massive you know like there are four or five trucks moving around with the stage props and everything so it's definitely uh like 
a growing experience yeah. on my end because you learn so much. Yeah. And, you know, I remember that uh, we met 10 years ago. You play with Overture. Uh, yes, I feel like in three years. Corana, in a super small stage and there were not many people. There were we from uh, Rock Home. And <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, and then uh, yeah, I, maximum 20 25 people, maximum yeah. 20 25. And people. then I remember we went uh, to eat and drink something to I think it was beer, but I yeah, could be like I really, I really don't, I, I mean, I, I remember one, one, one of those plays, and then we were talking. There is something that stay in my mind about you, and it was that uh, we were talking about a Disney movie. I, d I don't know why I don't know what it was and you were like yeah because uh, in the in the Disney movie I'm uh, one of the um, one of those um, bad uh, villains uh, and you were I'm like Jafar uh, and like Scar <laughs> yeah well, I've always I've always had a sympathy for the villain that's true like this is this is why right now like this is crazy like in in, in these days I'm following Loki you know the the yeah, series yeah. since the new episode I I always loved Loki like I have a sympathy <laughs> for the villain I don't understand why this this is totally me you remember correctly and I yeah. I totally it's I, something that I don't know why it stuck all those years in my mind but I, <laughs> that's that's something interesting. <laughs> But uh, yeah, and, and in the end, right now, right now, I'm mainly a pirate, you know, which is yeah. also, you know, not not the <laughs> purest figure in the world for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe you will be in a Disney movie. You have to work towards that. Well, I would music, love to. In a in a Disney musical. Yeah, I I would love to like to sing for Disney. It's like the top of my dreams, to be honest. Oh. Like this is like the top of the top. I, I for instance, I spoke with, I spoke about this, you know, you know the uh, crazy dreams with Marco, for instance, and Marco's dream is to be part of a musical, for instance, Marco Pastorino from Temperance, yeah. of course. Like he always tells me, like, yeah, my dream, like, would come true if I would end up being part of a musical one day. Like for me, it would be just singing even just one song for his name. This would be enough for me. The yeah. next pirate movie that they do, yeah. <laughs> So, start to send some emails uh, and uh, spare <laughs> the, vo the voice that uh, you you want to. <laughs> you are up to. Absolutely. Absolutely. I will do it. No, I don't say this. I will do it for free. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, you are now working for ne uh, Napal Records. Yeah, uh, Napal Records, your, yes. What, what, what's your... Uh, your main uh, um... so since two years i've been hired as product manager for napalm records like uh basically the big boss marcus he was really uh, impressed by the way i was dealing with uh, my bands like in the end uh, i was into two of the project around napalm records because temperance signed with napalm records and thanks to temperance i got also into into regions of atlantis and of course, there is a lot of mail exchange um, amongst the internal internal personnel, and I got to know you know people from the accounting office, people from the distribution office, people from the production office, and I've been handling a lot uh, for both my bands, uh, especially back then. I was handling way more than right now with Temperance. That's because we have a management uh, now with Temperance that took over, uh, took over the, the vast majority. And also because uh, with me increasing my uh, duties with Visions of Atlantis due to the happy evolution that we are having, Marco is taking more part of Temperance so that we are like somehow... Uh, responsible each for one band only basically <laughs> but yeah going back going back to the uh, to the topic uh, there was a lot of mail exchange and all the personnel at napalm were uh, happy with my precision with my devotion with my uh, speed in uh, in replies and in general with the way i was handling the bands and basically uh, they asked me at a certain point would you feel like doing this not only for your bands but also for other bands at napalm and of course, 
I was interested because basically working in the in the music business in the circle of music is my childhood dream. You know, I I of course my main my main purpose in life is singing, but nowadays being just a singer without a side activity or just a musician without a side activity is basically impossible for obvious uh, economical reason reasons this is why before that i had my studio and i was recording this is why uh, like if you ask almost every musician in the world they had a side activity that might be um, in the music business or around the world of music um and yeah of course i said i was interested it was it was absolutely my interest to to explore uh, and become part of this of this world so i uh, accepted i spent a couple of weeks in uh, berlin uh, the head office of uh, napalm records berlin to uh, get trained and get thought to to do my job many things i knew but of course there are so many uh how do you, administrational elements, administrational things, uh, operational uh, things that needed to be learned and they needed to uh, get used to, acknowledge and everything else. And right now, yeah, I'm product management, product managing uh, around 30 bands at Napalm Records. I can mention Camelot, uh, Delane, uh, Infected Rain, uh, Moonspell, uh, Wolfart, uh, Exit Eden, uh, I mean, the list is is pretty long. You know, there are there are many Ignea. Yeah, yes, I I really I'm really proud. I'm really proud of of uh, several connections that I that I finally have. And my job is basically, let's say that uh, when you sign when you sign with a label, uh, your band is assigned to a specific contact for all the needs that the band has toward the the label itself. Uh, and I am that figure for. Uh, all these thirty bands that I that I that I handled. So if they want to release a single, they have to ask me. If they want to, you know, uh, discuss about uh, when to release the next record, we have to talk about it. I have to collect all the informations for what concerns uh, author rights, uh, duration of the of the of the songs, titles. I have to coordinate all the themes. I I don't know if they need CDs for the. Uh, for the for the touring, they have to ask me, and I need to ask to the production team or to the uh, warehouse team. So I mean, it's it's way more complicated than this. There are so many. There is a lot uh, of things that you. you there have is to there is uh, yeah there is a lot of fields that that needs that needs to be covered, and a lot of things to be done, but mostly is organizational work. Mostly is about being organized and keeping track of everything for all the bands and coordinating with the bands or the management of the bands. Yeah, yeah, and now. Where are you living? Because now you are in Austria, but uh, are you living uh, in Austria or are you still living in Italy? Where, where I'm still living in Udine. Your, your place? <laughs> no, I'm still I'm still living in Udine, even if, even if like my my gas and electricity bills are the lowest of every Ital compared to every Italian because I'm at home for so little. Uh, of course, with touring and with my job, uh, which is also made of meetings and it's also made of, you know, of office work. So sometimes everything can be done in smart working, but it's also good and fair to be at the office every now and then. So this is why right now I'm here. Um, I, if I remember correctly, last year I was home for three months in total. And this yeah. year, I think it's pretty much the same because since January... I think maximum, maximum 90 days I've spent at home for real. Uh, so, yeah, I'm still Italian. My residence is still in Italy, but I am a citizen of the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, how did you get into metal music? <laughs> um, so... This is a not funny story. And I don't invite anyone to, <laughs> to follow my example, but... When I was uh, 12, 13, I think, 13 years old, um, my father bought uh, a CD uh, copier, you know, like the, the tool to copy, yeah. to copy the, the CDs. And back then, it was way different from how it is nowadays. You know, like I was uh, <laughs> like just a kid who didn't really understand what's behind the music business. Um, and I loved music. Of course, I didn't have my own money to get my own CDs. 
And uh, at a certain point when he bought it, I was like, hey, with this tool, I can actually ask CDs to my friend and start copying CDs. Um, and I, I I started to do it, of course, because it was it was unusual, you know, when I was just like now <laughs> everyone might laugh, laugh at it. But back then it was not easy to have a, a CD burner, you know, like it was not something that everyone yeah. had. Um, I, I remember it was one of the first one which allowed me to copy the CDs twice as fast as the duration of the CD. It was two per, you know, multiplied by two. Yeah. So so if the CD was 60 minutes, I would have spent half an hour to, to copy a CD back then. This is how it worked. Um, so yeah, I started to, uh, to clone some CDs from, from some friends. And I remember that all of a sudden it was 97 or 98. So I was 13 or 12 or 13. And a friend of mine gave me these CDs with, pyramids and you know this uh star shapes on it and it was um somewhere out in space from gamma ray um and it was yeah the first time that i saw and listened to something like this and i was like i like this i i want to know more i want to get more uh, of this and after that um i get some other cds from gamma ray and halloween and i I understood that it was something that was really hitting on me. Something was clicking, you know. I started to follow the scene. I got into um, into Iron Maiden. I got into Metallica. Uh, I had a dream theater moment. Uh, so I got to discover, you know, like bands. Back then, you know, it was not like nowadays when you have Spotify, you just type a name. And, and and you get to the full discovery. Yeah, thing. nowadays uh, more easy to get to know. It's and unbelievably the, easy. Yeah. You know, and 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 there was no digital uh, platform back then. You know, when Napster came out, I, I was a kid when Napster came out, and you could download the first MP3. Maybe you would have spent days to download a single MP3. Yeah. Because of the speed of the connection, because of everything. So it was a conquer to have, you know, a uh, like one or two songs downloaded to your computer um so everything was cycling around real cities real copies and 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 and, and real stuff and it was not that easy to to get it because either you had like a huge availability in terms of uh of economic spans or you had to adapt to what you had or to the cities that your friends were passing to you for a couple of days just to listen to it and if you loved it you might have bought it so it was it was uh, pretty 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 different, I would say. But yeah, I I got into it and I got to discover this band and this other band. Then I remember I fell in love with Blind Guardian at a certain point, and I ate literally ate the discovery of Blind Guardian. Uh, I got stuck into Nightfall in the Middle Earth, and I think that uh, I've listened to that record like every evening or almost every evening for like six months or something. This is how much I, I love Nightfall back then. And yeah, then, you know, this band came out, this other band came out. I got into, you know, you got to discover Hammerfall, then you got to discover Dragon Force, then you got to discover, you know, Evergrey. And band after band after band, I found myself being a metalhead. Yeah. And being loyal and faithful to, to my passion, the first concert I've ever seen is from Blind Guardian in Bologna. You know, I love Blind Guardian, but I have never seen them live. So it's something. Oh, that's really? Missing. Yeah, it's missing. And there are uh, several bands that I have been listening for many years, and still, uh, the, I don't. I don't. Well, I know because I didn't have the chance, and uh, you know, the, if they are not coming. Uh, to Finland maybe or if they come by I can go because I have something else so it's always like but maybe maybe one day let's yeah go. yeah yeah I mean it's, it's it's difficult you have a good festival over there in Finland you know yeah, there's the but... John, John Smith festival the Tuska festival so yeah, I was for the first time at Tuska last summer and I I'm not a big fan to go to Helsinki Mm -hmm. I I prefer other other place in Finland, but th there were uh, some bands that I had to see, so I went. Okay. And um, also, I didn't get uh, accreditation, so I was a bit uh, a, a bit uh, 
you know, dis- disappointed. Yeah, 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 I get it. <laughs> so normally, all the gigs and uh, and festival, I go, I'm going to do interviews and uh, take photos. And there, I was, I try to be a normal person that go to see a gig. And for me, I try to enjoy, but it was a bit. Uh, a bit bothering me that I was not able to take the photos in the moment, in the moment. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, I understand, I understand. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much this. Uh, but is Blind Guardian your favorite band? Oh, right now, I I cannot say anymore. Like in in that time, I would have said yes, a hundred percent. But then it changed. I got into Ed Guy, and there was this period of my life in, in which Ed Guy was my favorite band. Then. Avantasia, consequently, and Avantasia became my favorite band. Nowadays, oof, it's so hard. It's so hard. Like, you know, the thing is that one of the downsides of working in a music business is that you start listening to music in a different way. That's inevitable. Um, you you start thinking while you listen, which is never, never the best option. Uh, never the best thing to do and it's hard to avoid like if a band really catches me in in a way in which i make it to listen to the songs without at all thinking and overthinking of all the process that there is behind it and everything else this is a moment of magic and lately to tell the pure truth mirat is one of the band that made it mirat the uh, you, you know the band right yeah. And I got to saw them live two weeks ago, or really? not a bit more than two weeks ago. Yeah, at the beginning of the US tour with Lane, uh, with uh, at the Pro Power Festival uh, in, in Atlanta. And it was the first time that I saw them live, and I was so, so happy that I could, uh, that I could find a super show because I really, really, really love their second to last album. Like, second to last because they're releasing a new one right now, Shahili. Um, so yeah, Mira definitely is one of my top bands right now. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm I've always been a big fan of Camelot, so yeah. the fact that I'm also their product manager right now it's, it's just amazing for me. And I extremely like their latest record, I really, really like it. Yeah, um, I think they did an amazing job, and especially the single One More Flag in the Ground is uh. A touching song to me, at least. Yeah. So yeah, I, I mean, I could I could mention several names, but to mention only one right now and say, okay, this is my favorite band. It's yeah, it, uh... it's difficult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I mean, I have uh, those two bands that uh, I I I love, but then there is all those other bands that are so close, and then it depends. Sometimes sometimes is is a a whole album that just get me and I can listen to that album all the time. No oh, stop. Sorry, no. Which are the two bands? Oh, the two bands. And they are both Finnish. One is Sonata Artica. It's okay. It's been uh, one of the first bands that I have uh, listened about when we talk about metal. And then the other one is uh, Stamina. That is... Uh, okay. Do you know the band? Uh, only by name, to be honest. Yeah. If you ask me to mention any song, I wouldn't say, but I know I, I know the band and I can recall the logo. Yeah. But yeah, so two dif- dif- pretty different bands, uh, but they, they are still there big. And the uh, fun fact is that uh, uh, Sonata Artica is playing now around in Finland, but... Now I have so many things going on that uh, I was like, I'm not able to go to see Sonata Artica now. And they were supposed to play in the city where I live, or I live close to the city of Pori. They were supposed to play three times. Uh, the first time was uh, during a, a summer festival, but, but then Corona was a thing, so... It didn't happen. Then they were supposed to play the next winter, uh, but they didn't set with stamina, but they didn't sell enough uh, tickets, so they cancelled the, the the gig. Ah, mm, and it was sucks. like it was uh, during. I think it was uh, close to my birthday also the gig. So I was like waiting so so much to 
to this. I a was super bummer. <laughs> super bummer. It bounced at the same gig. Well, and then they were supposed to, the same summer to play in another festival, but then the festival was cancelled for I don't know what reasons. So I was like, mm -hmm. okay, it's never gonna happen again. <laughs> Or what? I don't know. I don't know, but uh, it was like... It will. It will someday. But I, yeah, last time that I saw Sonata Artica was summer 2014. And uh, I did an interview for uh, Rock On radio show. Because back then I was still doing some some work for them. So, yeah. And it was For me, it was a big thing to go and uh, interview Tony Cacco. <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, not it's, bad. It's it's always it's always nice. Nowadays it's different, you know. When I do the interviews, um, yeah, there is uh, always a bit maybe of uh, tension before, but then uh, it's it's different. It's uh, more easy, even if my English is still not like like how I would like. But you know, I no, it's it's English see, yeah. English uh, when I do interviews, pretty much so. <laughs> Yeah, but it, it comes with time. Like my English three years ago was uh, way way worse than now, and there's always room for improvement. So it's yeah. it's gonna happen. No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Do you speak uh, German? Ah, uh, I'm learning. I'm learning. It's difficult. The problem with German is that there are so many uh, words that are just uh, they don't have any connection with any Latin or uh, other language. You just need to memorize them as they are. So it, it's pretty difficult because you basically have to learn from the scratch a lot of words. And again, there is no connection. There is nothing that clicks with it. It's just that combination of letters that has that specific pronunciation. And it is what you have to memorize. No way out. Yeah. You know, like it's simple words, uh, like, but you know, everyone jokes about it, but like butterfly, it's schmetterling. Um, Hospital is Krankenhaus. Of course, house sounds like home, house, but Kranken is like, ich bin krank, I am sick. Like this, why krank? And what do you collect, connect krank with? It's not like malato, like in Italian, or malattia. Like there is no, this, there is not uh, this nuance. And at the same time, sick, ill, like it doesn't sound at all like krank. It's just different, you know? And, and this is just a stupid example. So, it's complicated, it's but I'm. Step. Huh? Step yeah, step by step. step, step, step. I'm, I'm doing my best. I can, I can, you know, I made some hotel reservations on my own already, you know, in German without, without the help of anyone. I, I can go to the supermarket and order stuff without any, without any issue. Uh, but yeah, there is still a long way, especially when it comes, you know, to future and path and yeah. Yeah, no, proper formulation of words. You know, everything. the good f thing about the Finnish language is that there is no future. It's always yeah, the, it's, can... a, it's always the present <laughs> and the past. Okay. Yeah, but it's ah, not, there is no mean. future. So you are talking like uh, the present. <laughs> okay. Okay. At, le at least something is. <laughs> yeah, at least, at least. <laughs> <laughs> but let's get my jar of random topics. And see what we are going to get today. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we got uh, an interesting one. Paranormal. Oh, paranormal? Yeah. Okay. Do you believe in paranormal? Do you have any experience? So that's a tough question. Like, I tend to believe that everything has a, a scientific explanation. And what we called paranormal is probably something that we still don't understand. You know, like if you think uh, of the past, of the, of the remote past, they were thinking that lightnings were, you know, messages of hate sent by the gods. Uh, so it was paranormal for them. But then we discover how it works. So I tend to believe that if something is unexplainable nowadays, uh, and we call it paranormal. This is something that we just still don't really yeah. don't know. Yeah, that can be that can be uh, discovered. But yeah, uh, at the same time, there are things that I've seen or experiences that I've that I've had that are absolutely 
out of any explanation. Uh, and yeah, I wonder if if yeah, I wonder how it works. So I don't want to. I don't want to completely close the door on it. Yeah, so it's an open door. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, it's it's good to be. It's good to stick to your beliefs, but at the same times, if you are too close minded, uh, you could be wrong. You know, so I don't want to be a closed door. Yeah. I yeah. So. Not not fully not fully uh, I I don't fully disbelieve about, on it. Yeah, but let's get another one. Let's see what we get. Okay. If we get something, if you hear some voices now and there is no one, well, you you know that paranormal activities. <laughs> no, okay. Let's, okay. Let's hope not. <laughs> eh. Just one, just one, and these uh, fears. Uh, Fears. Oh, so mm. what's what's your fear? So <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is fun. Um, I uh, heights, heights for sure. I'm not super confident with heights. Uh, of course, it, it's not about flying. Flying is fine because in the end, I'm in a safe environment, or at least I believe I'm in, the, in a safe environment. But when I'm on a cliff, or you know, when you have a big jump in the water this is something that i i'm not really confident with it uh it's it's you know i, I wouldn't say it's vertigo it's more about just yeah fear of the height um and then this this might be this is funny because it's connected to the previous one aliens okay <laughs> So you just asked me if I if I believe in paranormal, and I told you, yeah, well, you know that it's an open door. Actually, since I'm a child, the reason why I, I actually can explain this: when I was a kid, um, I was fascinated by this topic, and my family bought me a book that was clearly not meant to kids. It was a, a book, you know, with all the FBI cases and all the, um, you know, the secret topics about Area 51 and stuff like this. And there were some pictures. And I remember that at a certain point, I was reading super interested. And I found that picture. I looked at the picture and it was terrorized. And I think this created a trauma in yeah. me because I, I, I can still recall it. And from that moment on, I always had a huge fear of aliens. I mean, it's complicated because I'm also fascinated at the same time. Like if there is an alien movie or something like this, I, I love to watch it. But, you know, when you watch it like this, like, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> that that's pretty much the, the even even I mean, Mars Attack is a stupid movie, so I can watch it with ease. But for instance, Science from Mel Gibson, I had to watch it during the day in the daylight, you know, with someone uh, around me because otherwise I would have been terrorized. Yeah. So, yeah. My my secret uh, my secret leak my secret uh, you know the, the the fear the biggest fear they have is this probably yeah well but uh, you know at least they are not if the aliens exist because we don't we don't know but if they exist uh, at least it's not common to meet them. <laughs> Or yeah, yeah, that's, that's maybe, for sure. maybe they are around us and we don't know. But yeah, but you know, my fear is uh, I, I, I'm scared about wasps. So every summer is like I hate them. I hate, I don't know why I'm scared because they never stunned me, but I'm scared. And uh, this summer, I, I remember that at some point I was uh, hearing. Zzz, zzz, then I watch, and there was one of the window in this room, and then oh my god, where, how she did she came in because the window was closed, and then uh, we have a room, the the next room here is the toilet of the cats, and then I I was going to clean up the toilets, and then I was just walking in and I watched in front in, on the window there were three wasps. Okay. I, I cannot. I cannot. I, yeah, I remember I was a cleaner years ago, and I remember it was Friday, and I had to go to clean uh, this uh, place where the people was were, were eating. It was the last place, last forty five minutes of work. I had just to go there and clean the the floor, pretty much. And I remember I watched there were like eight waspies, and 
I just went inside at some point and uh, went to the kitchen and say, there is a wasp is there and I'm scared. Uh, and then I start to cry. <laughs> and I still, I still think that I was, it was such a hideous thing to do, but I don't know, I was in panic. And it's it's something crazy when when you 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 fear something, then I I don't know in in the body something happened of co of course so they it, it yeah 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 it's out of control, in the modality course, out of control. in the survive modality so <laughs> but yeah so yeah the aliens are better than the wolves <laughs> they're less common to find to be found that's for sure. <laughs> let's say let's put it down like this yeah. it's less probable that you will find it in your toilet or anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let's talk about the most important thing. That is yes, pizza. I know where we're going. Yes. So do you like pizza? Of course. Like how, how, like, why do you even ask? I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> but what is your favorite pizza? So <laughs> um, I'm pretty basic on this. I'm pretty one second. Yes, I'm pretty basic on this. Um, it's gonna be Margarita. Like the answer to this is Margarita. Like I think that you truly understand when a pizza is good when you eat a margarita. True. Because like you know, everything else is an add-on. It's like you know, for video games or or games in table games or everything, like when the basic game is good. All the add-ons can become like a fantastic power-up. But the basic pizza is just dough, cheese, or mozzarella, actually, and tomato sauce. Yeah. And then, yes, you can have like, and the oil, of course, the oil is, is fundamental. But that's, that's the standard. Like if that works and if that is good, then you're done. Then that's all you need. There is nothing else that you need. So my beta testing for pizzas and my also my favorite consequently is margarita. Because when margarita is good, you know, you don't need anything else. I you see what I mean? It's like it's it's like music. It's like music. It doesn't matter like if the song is good, it's good. You can mix it really well, you can mix it not really well, but if the song is good, it stays good. There are songs that are mixed so badly, but we still love them because they are fantastic, because they are great. And the same goes with, with, with pizza, you know, like when the basic elements are perfect or are good enough, then that's everything that you need. Yeah, that's true. I also have this, uh, you know, I, I like to take margarita with olives. I just oh, nice. give that. I, I'm Black just, or green olives? Black. Okay, perfect. Because a green, in my opinion, it doesn't taste good on the on the. Pizza. No, black is more metal, also. Yeah, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> it's stronger, <laughs> heavier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, where did you eat the best pizza? Good question. Um. So, there are two places. One is actually in Italy. And it was in Naples, which might sound like a cliche, but it was one of the best pizzas I've ever eaten. And funny enough, the second one I had in Vienna, where there is a pizza place that has uh, an award, actually a World Pizza Championship award. Like they won the World Pizza Championship a couple of uh, years ago, or I, I mean, I don't know how many exactly, I don't remember by heart. Um, but I have to admit that, that pizza was extremely good, like extremely good, like really, really, really good. Um, I don't recall the name of the place. I have it noted down, but of course the pizzaiolo, the pizza, the chef was Italian. So <laughs> it makes sense. <laughs> it just makes, it just makes sense. Just and, makes sense. uh, where did you eat the worst pizza? Uh, in America yeah in America like it's basically American pizza is not a thing for me like they it's just different New York, New York pizza is not bad okay. New York pizza is not bad 
but it, it's a thing like they call it New York pizza. So there is a reason why, probably. Uh, but the American pizza in general is just not my thing. I, I would say, yeah. unless you find you know a special pizza place that use the Italian traditional ingredients and stuff like that. But it's rare, extremely rare yeah. that you find anything like this. I, I found some decent pizza places. Uh, in the United States, but in general, American pizza is yeah not the best. The best, yeah. Well, I don't. I I cannot say nothing because I have never been in America. So, well, and try and it. Of... <laughs> if if you ever go there, try it just for the sake of trying, so that yeah. you understand what I'm talking about. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure that you won't eat uh, pizza every day in the U.S. Yeah. Well, I think that for them uh, is not. Uh, a healthy choice of food when they talk about pizza but in Italy it's still a healthy food yeah I mean it's less dangerous than other stuff yeah that's for sure yeah <laughs> and then there is the the question that uh, you know divide people into the one that say that the uh, pineapple belongs to pizza and the ones that say that pineapple doesn't belong to, on pizza so what's your opinion of, on this topic pineapple doesn't belong to pizza i'm sorry there is no way it, it belongs to pizza it's like it's fruit it's it's a fruit you don't put fruit on pizza like it's like pizza with apples or pizza with pear or pizza with bananas you you just don't do it it's 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 a different food you don't do it. <laughs> I'm I'm agree, and uh, uh, the biggest shock when I came when I moved to Finland was seeing people put peach on the pizza. Yes, yeah, see, it's not, it was not the the peach, the fruit, the fr fruit fresh. It was just the one that you buy in the. You know, in the in the boxes, uh, and there is all those syrup inside. No, oh, those, okay. those were, and I was like uh, looking and thinking, why? It's like how not to do it right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like but the, explanation you know, of how not to do it right. Not everyone has a great taste. <laughs> No, I mean, if they I'm like, I'm going if, to comment on the on those videos. What are we talking about? Sorry. Sir. I mean, if you, if you if you like it, if they like it, it's fine. You know, it's just that I I, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I don't yeah. want to eat it. Well, it's like it's you you can do whatever pizza, you want with your... Yeah, if it's not on my pizza, it's fine. Take exactly, your yeah, stuff. Exactly. I'm I'm doing my. <laughs> do whatever you want with your life, but please don't touch my my pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but we are at the end of this interview. Uh, thank you so much for being uh, my guest. It was a uh, it was a pleasure to talk uh, to you face to face, even if uh, we are uh, through a webcam. But uh, it's it's been a while since last time we we talked. Yes, yeah, as you said, it's ten years, something like ten years. Yeah. So it's uh, and as you said, a pretty, pretty, quite quite some things change. You know, it's unbelievable sometimes how. Life is uh, yeah. like surprising, you know. Yeah, and I'm so proud of you because you came from over tours uh, and then. Um, yeah, so at, at you did. You Croatia, did all, all these uh, these these uh, things, uh, and you are you are at the top. All all. Well, the, 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 Disney, the, top, the Disney the, musical. The the Disney music. Yeah, the, is, uh, no, but there is also there is a long there is a long way. Of course, you know it's like I'm I'm at a good place. I'm really happy where I am. But of course, there is much more that can be still improved and better. And also, it's it's not only about my will now. You know, once uh, once you reach a certain level, luck and good moves and right choices, and of, you also have to deal with your own level. You know, maybe. Uh, none of my bands will ever be as big as others, but I'm absolutely fine with it because what I'm doing right now, where where I am right now, where I'm at, is absolutely satisfying for me. I I I'm extremely happy. But at the same time, and this is something that I I would like to say, I always uh, mention this. You know, when I was a kid and when I started to play music and I was in Gorizia, everyone was against me. Like people, I mean, not against me, but everyone was telling me that I was a dreamer. 
like even my my own family at the beginning was like this is never gonna work and surprise like the most surprising thing is that when i was teaching in a music school the owner of the music school who chose me to be a, a, one of the vocal coaches of the school because he believed in my talent he was the first one to tell me what you are willing to do it's so difficult i i highly suggest you to find something else or to you know aim at something different and he was pure in saying this he was worried for me because of course you know i was the kid that was like taking days off to go on tour like taking investing a lot of energy and a lot of time and a lot of money in my projects and of course it's hard especially if you come from a city like gorizia because they what they were telling me gorizia is the, for those who doesn't know it, because for, for us it's maybe obvious, but this <laughs> is the city, the city where I was born, thirty five thousand inhabitants in the northeast of Italy. Everyone was telling me, if you are born here, it's really really difficult for you to do anything outside of here. Go to Milano, go to Vienna, go to somewhere else. But despite all of that, I fought, I fought hard, and I I made it. I still live, you know, my family still lives in Gorizia and I live in Udine, which is like 40 kilometers from, from, from Gorizia. Still, I am touring the world with my band and I live out of, uh, out of what I earned in the world of music. So if, if you truly believe in what you do, you are determined and you fight for it. I truly believe the life. Follow your right. dreams. Exactly. It's, it's I, I, even I always to. say, yeah. Exactly. It's so... interested here. I have kind of a similar experience to you, not not really the same, but uh, uh, moving to Finland and so on. Uh, people were like not believing in me that I'm going to do this move. Uh, they say that it's not something good to do and uh, a lot of things. But then I was like, I want to. And when I, if you want, if you love something, you are going to achieve that something. And a lot of yeah, yeah exactly. Open door you will find if you do sacrifice, if you work towards what you dream of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, sometimes you you have to struggle and you have to fight way more than, uh, than you want because, of course, life can get tough. But yeah, if you truly want it and if you love what you, what you, what you want, yeah, I think that we can all make it. Yeah. So do you want to say something to your fans? Well, like if, if they reach this point of the interview, I can only be thankful for, you know, the interest everyone had while uh, listening to this, while, uh, while watching and listening to what I have to say. Um, just follow everything that I'm doing because this is the most, uh, the, the thing that gives me the, the most uh, happiness in the world. You know, like my goal with music is to leave something to those who listen to, to, to the music I write and to uh, what I sing. Um, so if this is a reason that leads people to listen to me, to listen to my interviews, to stay with me for uh, an hour or something and to, and to follow uh, what I'm doing, then I can only be grateful and thankful. And I'm sure that those who are here will keep on following me. Yeah, that's true. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And see you soon, hopefully. Maybe yeah. in Finland. Yeah, I'm Maybe waiting Finland. for you to, to come to Finland. Let me know when we I play, come. We played Tushka in 2019. Yeah, but uh, in 2019. now you, are, you have to come now, not not to look into the past. Let's look to the exactly, future. Exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, let's see, let's see. Maybe maybe Tushka, maybe John Smith uh, Festival, yeah. maybe something. Well, I'm waiting for some news then. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just getting late. Like maybe, let's hope. Yes. Let's see. So if, if someone you is coming new to to play, I will be happy to come. I will, yeah, I will drop you a message. Perfect. <laughs> Great. Good evening. Ciao, ciao, ciao.